Blocksters, welcome to the Blockchain Hustler, a show where we talk to the leading founders, creators, celebrities, and disruptors who are hustling in Web3. Today's guest is Adrusha Apana. Adrusha is an Emmy-nominated filmmaker, artist, executive producer, and the founder of Curiosity Entertainment, a production company that develops, produces, and finances high-concept stories into commercial film and television. Her recent release includes the Emmy-nominated film The Survivor on HBO Max. She is a Spotify creator, founding member of the Producers Guild of America's Social Impact and Entertainment Board. She's an advisory board member to the Move Network NFT platform, and she is a Web3 advocate. Oh my gosh, Adrusha, so many things. First of all, thank you so much for joining us on the Blockchain Hustler today. What a beautiful intro. I mean, I don't know where you found all the information. It's 100% <laughs> accurate, and I feel like you should come with me at all times and introduce me. Yeah. You're well, it's so easy to introduce you because you do so many incredible things. Yeah, I, you know, have always just been an artist who believes in the artist economy and believes yeah. in building business practices around it that allows artists to create with more freedom. And that's what my entire life journey has been. Um, I tell and I and I am a storyteller um, in music and film and television because I think that uh, art is one of the ways to execute change on a global scale that is still sticky and relevant and gets to people at the core um, of of their beings in terms of really shifting human ideas, human resonance, the way someone feels. And so to me, in many ways, it's a much more um, valid platform to execute social impact or social change. And that word is used kind of like broadly these days, right? What does that actually mean? It's, it's really about you know, being able to inspire someone, even you know, someone going through a bad breakup who has depression, um, or inspire a little kid in Malaysia who has nothing to their name and decides one day they want to become a lawyer because they see someone on TV do it. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's a reason why storytelling is my love language. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about um, the Web3 techno Web technology and what it's going to do for storytellers globally in the next couple of years. Absolutely. I know. I want to dive into all of your thoughts on Web3 and how it's changing the entertainment industry. And before we do that, I just want to learn more a little bit about your background in the industry and then also what kind of projects, what kind of storytelling you do produce at Curiosity Entertainment. Sure. So uh, my Web3 journey is a little different than others. I had been around and I have some amazing friends who were in blockchain and crypto um, from the early, early days, I actually flew down to Puerto Rico and met with Brock and his team and I had a bunch of people who were trying to get me to ICO at that time, a traditional film and television fund. And, you know, the initial conversations I had led to me advising a lot of my friends just on some of the basic structural issues and integrating um, the blockchain technology and smart contract technology in traditional film and TV and trying to create solves around it, right? Like this is why the industry is shaped this way. How could we solve for it? And then when NFTs, they're, I don't know, let's call it second, third wave because they've been around for ages, but when the wave kind of um, hit popular culture, I guess, on all the audio platforms, um, I was there, I was there and I, my mother, who's an amazing NFT artist now, she's an amazing artist first and foremost, oh, I told her she'd been trying to get in galleries and I was like, you gotta go pay attention to this. This is how you break through as an artist. I don't have the time, but you need to go and be in these rooms. And she did and she showed everywhere now. She um, goes under Ruthie's art. She showed everywhere from Art Basel to New York, to Rome, to Hong Kong. Wow. Like she's in the World Trade Center right now. She's a fabulous That's amazing. Artist. But I personally was having some issues in understanding how um, NFTs would integrate, or that technology rather, because I think NFT in many ways is becoming like a word that is associated just with the digitalized pictures that became very popular in the first round. Um, but really, it's so much more than that, right? So how much that technology, how it could affect our industry. And the reason that I was having a hard time understanding it is because 
within these concepts around fractionalized ownership or raising um, using IP, et cetera, for traditional film and TV, there were some very basic hiccups that we all saw come to the forefront in the couple months fo following that around ownership. And mm -hmm. as a traditional film and television company that develops, produces, and then a sister company that finances our own film and television projects for mainstream network as well as the theatrical, um, I am in a unique position where I know how those contracts work. And I kind of foresaw some of the things we saw with Tarantino, um, with the we other big name drops that try to take old IP and bring it to the forefront that hit the news globally, right? Um, right. I kind of foresaw these things because I know how those contracts work and I know that a creator signs their rights off, first to distributor and then to financier. So I was having a hard time um, and I wanted, because I love the ethos of this community so much, I wanted to figure out, because the, the basic understanding of the principles were so in alignment with everything I believe in, more freedom to artists, more ownership to artists, being able to create with more freedom despite the economic infrastructure that's kind of in place that holds us back. But the solves at that time, I couldn't figure out what the one-to-one -one was. So I went to meet a friend of mine named Jesse Berger, who used to run Radical Studios. He still runs Radical Studios, but he's gone fully into crypto. He owns um, um, something called Packet that is decentralizing the internet, an amazing project that's doing very, very well. And I said, Jesse, I know I've been around the industry for so long, but I need you to speak to me like I'm a five-year-old. Yeah. What am I missing? <laughs> Here. And listen, guys, like I graduated top of my class, like I have <laughs> been um, 25 kids full of scholarship. I'm a smart human being. I've been around mm -hmm. the, the wave and the the people for and the, understood the language. But I think that in general, whenever we have a new industry or whenever we have cross collaboration of two different industries, language becomes a huge barrier to entry, not mm -hmm. just for um, people who maybe are not as tech savvy, but for people in general. And let's take it out of the tech wave. Let's just talk about language between CPD, which is consumer product goods, and film and television, for example. Mm -hmm. Massive barriers to these two explaining what is success in their industry, meaning for CPG, it's ROI, return on investment of whatever their ad spend is. For film and TV, it's eyeballs and audience, but the two cannot sometimes speak the same language to figure out how to work seamlessly together. And we've seen a lot of, um, a, a lot of complaints on both sides every time we try to see brand and film and TV get back together. So that's just a very base example. Um, and with Web3 and crypto and smart contracts and NFTs, it's no different, right? It's a new industry and we're trying to speak the language of all these other people and all these other industries, all these other artists. Um, so Jesse sat down with me and as someone who has a filmmaker background and had also developed, produced and financed film and TV t traditionally, and as someone who, like me, had a and a much deeper crypto, blockchain, smart contract, NFT background, we were able to sit together and create solves for all the issues that I had kind of been coming up against and what that would look legally like in contracts. And so mm -hmm. I made it kind of my mission after I had my aha moment to go to traditional film and television creators and to Web3 film and television creators and say, this is how these industries work together. And these are the things that you need to watch out for. So to answer the half of your question, I run a traditional um, entertainment label called Curiosity Entertainment. We have five TV shows and two movies this year that were all co-created by us. The first will be announced in a couple weeks uh, domestically. It's already been announced internationally. It's the next show from the creator of Ozark, Michael Williams. Um, and we do have a star, but I can't I can't tell you who that is yet. Uh, and a great music soundtrack by an A-list DJ who I also can't tell you about yet. I'm also doing the next film from Anthony McCartan who did Theory of Everything, Darkest Hour, and is right now in the Whitney biopic. Um, and we have a Simon West film that films in Malta in a couple of weeks. 
Um, so I'm happy to tell you kind of what some of those finds were. Happy to share those with you, but I think that kind of answers the question of what I'm doing right now and what I've done, um, uh, how I got into Web3. Oh my gosh. I, I would love to dive into what you found out when doing all of this research and how to link Web3 to the entertainment industry and also just the feedback that you got when you did bring the information about blockchain technology to Hollywood. And just from your perspective, obviously working in the traditional film and television industry, just how are you seeing entertainment projects beginning to utilize blockchain technology? Well, I'm still bringing, in terms of Hollywood, I think it's going to take many more people than just me using our voices to, again, and I think this is not just Hollywood, because I think this is all industries, to massage the language between the two and really mm -hmm. speak artist to artist, speak brand manager to brand manager, speak filmmaker to filmmaker about what these actual applications for this beautiful technology can be to help disrupt and renovate more than anything our world as a whole. So I'm still talking and I'm, I'm speaking again on Friday with the animal concert guys here in LA. I'm still talking and trying to get in front of as many entertainment audiences because I think that's a responsibility of us if we're passionate about the Web3 community is to help speak that language to other people who are not in the Web3 community and bring them into the idea fold um, versus you know just growing within ourselves. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of where, with us being in such heavy pre-production, that's where I've kind of focused my time is making sure I'm in front of entertainment people. So picking up things where there's a lot of entertainment folks and then explaining what those one-to-one -one applications are. And for me, the real excitement to answer the first part of your question is around this idea of fandom and mm -hmm. under, around this idea of loyalty and around this idea of finally rewarding the people who build our brands and who lift us up and who have always been such an important part of the creative process, but who we've never really found a seamless way to thank, integrate, and to reward. Um, I love, you know, some of the ideas that you and I hear around fractionalized ownership and Web3 type projects, right? And I think there's two things that are happening here. There is, and this has happened, it's happened when YouTube came out, not that that's a new tech, but you know, it was a new platform. This happened when Instagram came out for sure. This happened, you know, when Web2 came about and streaming content became a thing in general. And that is that every time we have a new wave of tech, VR, AR, there is a whole new market that opens up for storytelling. So one thing that's happening is this beautiful thing that I like to call Web3 storytelling. Mm -hmm. And that I believe is its own thing. And it's tremendous because it gives democratized access to people globally. Once again, just like YouTube kind of did in many ways to pick up their phone, pick up their computer, pick up their pen and tell stories in a way that can build audience, right? Organically and virally and get those ideas and stories into the world to inspire people where they live. I often say like when I'm talking on panels, if your goal as an artist was to be a storyteller, there is no greater time to have been alive. Like you can tell a story these days on all these platforms I've just named and you can make money. You could make more than I make in film and TV. It's tremendous. Your audience could be bigger. You have been given the gift in this generation of if you are a passionate artist and storyteller, musician, whatever, of being able to control your own destiny and have just as much impact as anyone who picks up a camera and works for an MGM or a Warner Brothers or whoever else. Mm -hmm. To me, 
that's beautiful, but it takes us redefining what our goals are. If your goal is to tell a theatrical film or to have something on ABC or NBC or Netflix, then we have to understand what those systems are and how to work with those systems to improve them. So two very different contexts of how this idea of storytelling within film or within digital or whatever can be utilized in this new Web3 space. And I think the first thing is to identify, you know, which one brings you more joy because they can both bring you the equal amount of money. So it's mm -hmm. really about a format and how you define success as a human being, right? Whether you're willing to look at success as just reaching an audience, which is what I think success is, or whether it's something else. Now, I came up in traditional film and TV and were set up for traditional film and TV for me. In this area, in traditional film and television, what's exciting is the fandom that I spoke of. For independent producers, for independent filmmakers, for independent actors, for mm -hmm. anybody who is not part of uh, Warner Brothers or Netflix or whatnot, we are entering in this this portion of our industry where as tech has come in with distribution platforms like Netflix and the, and the 2000 other distribution platforms on my TV back there, we have seen that the independent artist has had trouble breaking through without the big marketing budgets, without the big whatever you get every now and then you got, you know, your diamond in a rough story. That is the mm -hmm. exception to rule. But I told, I've talked on many of the panels about this, I believe is a Harvard Business Review. They had done an article on Stars, which is of course a top three premium channel. And Stars was taken over by a CEO who is now tech focused. Um, he came from a tech background. And he did this, um, this article and he talks about the reason why he wanted a app for Stars. When he said, I want to create an app for Stars, everyone was kind of like why we can't compete with netflix we can't compete with hulu we can't like you're not going to get subscribers to stars but his reason for doing it was not that he wanted subscribers for stars his reason for doing it was because even if it was just a flow through app that sat on a voodoo or a hulu or a um apple uh, a fire stick or whatever other app he'd be able to collect the data of who his viewers were. And he was realizing what we should all be realizing as independent artists, that the most important thing of the next 10 years of independent artists is going to be to know who your audience is, know mm -hmm. how to find them, and know how to re-deliver to them the products that they love. And that's in any industry, but specifically in content. And so he had created the app and found out in the first couple of months that his demographic was all women of color from the Midwest. He had been completely, they had been completely wrong on their demographic and they pivoted their programming and now they're a top three premium channel again. And I use this example because what Web3 allows you to do, Stars has big budgets, he was a tech guy, he was able to pay for the app, he was able to get gather the first party data. Web3 is your chance to have that direct consumer connection in the mm -hmm. palm of your hands. That first party data, maybe not in the form of spreadsheets, but it is yours to have in the form of direct connection with your audience, being able to spend time with them, to understand who your super fans are, understand what they wanna see out of your content, and then pivot just like stars did to make sure that you are serving those people who have supported you the most. And this is what excites me about web three from an NFT standpoint, meaning this idea of this one of one being basically being gifted or given or sold to someone who heard your core group and can help you allow them to participate in your ecosystem. And then from a smart contract standpoint, you know, I think that we are in a space where at least in terms of tracking revenues back to wallets when you have a split ownership of IP, which happens on every film and TV show, we're not that far away from smart contracts being able to replace or work with traditional bond companies. And for those of you who are not in film and TV, um, those are basically the people who insure the film and they, they actually 
disperse all the um, all the earnings based on the contracts that are given to them uh, to all the people involved. And we are not that far away from them being able to adapt this tech, which would get rid of a lot of the concern that people in independent film and TV and in studio have with where are my residual? Where is my back end? Is someone in my accounting group going and making sure that they paid us this month? Because that will right. all be audited. So these are the two places I'm super excited in film TV and I'm happy to go into either of them further. Um, but I'm gonna let you talk, Kaylee. <laughs> oh my gosh, Adrusha, that was so incredible. You like answered so many of my questions and I love that you're such an advocate and bringing all of this information to the people in the entertainment industry who need to hear it, the fans, um, I love what you said about the fandom as well. And obviously getting that data is very helpful for filmmakers, the producers, executive producers, the companies, but then having that connection to fans is so important too, because it gives fans the power to be a part of the conversation and maybe give ideas. And obviously they benefit by the production companies, all maybe altering their content or just that collaboration is so Holy. incredible. Imagine if all the Reddit boards about Marvel had actually been interactive and the and the um, creators had had access to like all those insights from their fans and be able to work with them and reward them. I like, like to give this example of the Beanie Baby ladies who helped create the Beanie Baby brand and then ended up getting sued by Beanie Baby because they started a magazine, a fan magazine. Uh, and they literally created the million dollar brand. There's a whole Netflix uh, documentary about it. Can you imagine what that, that probably feels like, like to be one of them and then get sued after you helped create something? This is, again, where we've kind of missed the mark a lot of times as creators um, in all industries in terms of, yes, we may have perks or giveaways to like friends, but like, what are we really doing for the, the, the service that they provide us of really being our voice in the marketplace and carrying mm. that, you know, that voice to the corners of the world. And I should say that we are doing our own metaverse project that will back our curiosity characters. We have not announced it yet because um, we got a, a the pandemic put us back on announcing our full year, but it is something that we have sat with some of the best minds, both in Web3 as well as um, in film and television. And there's amazing stuff that's going to be coming out of the entertainment industry in the next couple of years with people who really get it and get the community and understand the principles and are not, you know, just trying to take advantage of a, a money grab in any way, shape or form who are thoughtful about fans and to learn from all of them and just understand what that future can be together has been beautiful and has helped us so much in building what we're going to be bringing to market as well. Oh, that's incredible. And it's very exciting to think about what is to come when it comes to the merge of traditional with Web3. And we're starting to see like film and TV projects that'll be released on the blockchain. Um, maybe some red carpet, like movie premieres in the metaverse. These ideas are all rolling. Some are actually happening. What are your predictions for the future of just entertainment, Hollywood and Web3? And then how soon do you think Hollywood and the big production companies and maybe A-list stars will start to adapt? Um, I think that, again, the smart contract side for some of the um, support of the current cameras in film and TV in terms of dispersion of cash. I think you'll see that happen sooner rather than later on the um, on the independent the independent side. Um, I can't give you an exact prediction on time because there's some things that you and I know need to refine in terms of the tech um, that is still catching up. But I think as soon as that becomes something that is um, that that they're that they're is there able to be some oversight in it by those camera companies that that will be um, something that will be brought into that that portion of our industry and I think for big film and TV creators um, you know it's really about everyone understanding this principle of loyalty and I think if you relate it to um, loyalty programs and having more access to who those people are that is something that is very adaptable and adoptable very, very quickly. 
-hmm. And for me, you know, I think that your answer, your question is a little bit tiered because I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I think again, it goes back to all of us adopting some new language around this to make it more receivable to the general public. Um, you know, we, we want to democratize the, the language. We want to make sure that um, underserved communities understand it just as much as those who have had the ability to be around these kinds of networks and, and listen to these great minds, right? And I think that the way that we do that, again, is going to take the accountability of creators like myself and others really taking what has become a beautiful language within the web three and simplifying it into the actuality of what these principles are and what the um, tech is capable of, right? And so I, I believe that our timeline is only hindered by us doing the work around language. Mm, absolutely. And I do wanna pivot a little bit, obviously, it's getting better, but the space of web three is pretty male dominated more and more women are coming into it, having higher up positions, executive positions. And just from your perspective, my question is, how do you think the adoption of Web3 will possibly empower women? And then what advice would you give to other women who want to get into it and learn about it? Um, I think that what's always beautiful when we have a new movement like this is that we have the ability to um, reduce any past discrepancies behind between color race etc because when we are fighting in the uh, and gender because when we are fighting in the traditional marketplace we are always fighting against historical values that have been set based around historical biases and the blockchain web three space is, you know, a brand new environment. And it's not really, um, it's not really prisoner to a lot of the, the uh, things that historically the capital markets are kind of prisoner to because of the way our countries and our world was were built and the biases within um, society for years and years. So I just see it as a, a space where if you're a female, you know, pick up a, a, a pick and start building because there isn't that kind of idea of like, this is how the market reacts to fill in the blank, right? Females, people of color, people of different sexual, but there isn't that like historical um, relevance in the marketplace right now. I believe it's like much more democratized space for people to build and to um, create value without those biases. And you know, also there's a, a level of of understanding within this community that has pushed Web3 forward of taking art as it is, right? Not it being about this, um, the, so much about the principles that IRL and Web2 stand by of like, where did it come from? How did it come to be? Who is this? Who is that? There's some of that, you know, you're always going to have some of that from industry to industry, from society to society, from tech to tech movement to tech movement spill over. But there's also a bit of anonymity in the space where you can just be, you know, judged on your work. And that's kind of beautiful, right? Um, mm -hmm. Don't we all wish to like live in a space where algorithms and numbers don't matter as much and the art speaks for itself? And I really hope, because we've seen, you and I have seen some changes over the last even two years to that kind of like community aspect and feel. And I really hope to all the community members out there listening who really have believed in that as the core movement, the freedom of artistic expression and of being a builder and of coming up with new ideas that we continue to like, we continue to foster and we continue to push those ideals forward. Um, because it's so easy when a new space starts becoming um, what I like to call societized, right? The principles of other human nature, um, 
rules start pouring into a community. We've seen it happen, mm -hmm. you know, in so many startups, we've seen it happen, so many tech platforms where for a moment, it's this beautiful space. Yeah. And everyone's just collaborating and building together. And then you enter capital, you enter um, authority, you enter the idea of giving out prizes and winning and losing and it becomes this other thing. Um, and I hope that we are able to keep some of the space of the Web3 magical um, and, you know, really um, focused and committed to the principles it was started on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Beautifully said. And the reason that we connected with you was because last month you spoke at the Future Shape 360 event by MetaNoise in Denver. Can you just tell us about your relationship with that community and how the event went? You know, MetaNoise asked me to speak um, through an advisor of mine. And I've been very, very um, careful as to what events I've kind of lent my name to mainly because I don't have a lot of time. We are in pre-production on yeah. three different projects right now. And I do still make film and TV for a living. But also um, because of our first topic of conversation on, the, on this call, Kaylee, just the idea of being able to make sure that the audience were the people who could then receive the message and take it to other folks in entertainment and help um, carve out, change, and evolve this language uh, in a way that more and more people can pick up the movement and spread it like wildfire. And so Meta Noise, when I met with Noam and the other founders and I took a look at what they were creating, I was so impressed because I felt like they got the idea of artist community right within holding one of their tokens you are as an artist and with the artist privy to some of their first drops and to sharing your work with with everybody else and those artists were kind of all hand curated meaning recommended artists to artists and they've been building it gradually um and so you know they've been selective and smart about who they let into their community that can really be these people who speak the language of artists to other artists and help spread the word. And so it was very much in right. alignment with what I believe in and was happy to lend my voice to them and to uh, spend time learning from other musicians and other tech gurus who'd built in the entertainment space and other people who were creating web three content and other storytellers and other fine artists and really having that community to then go back to and say hey here's an idea who would want to collaborate on it and so we've seen a lot of communities come up and i love a lot of the artist communities and each have kind of picked out their own niche of like what they stand for what Meta Noise really stood for was for collaboration. And that I think is to, uh, to pull it full circle is doing what we just asked for as a call to action, really taking those initial principles of Web3 and making sure that they live and breathe in a community that will continue to grow projects both in the Web3 space and beyond. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So wonderful. So much good insight. Um, before we wrap up this interview, can you just tell Blocksters what you have coming up and where everyone can follow and connect with you? Yeah, sure. So um, what I have coming up, you should look for our television announcement the first week of September. It's the next show from the creator of Ozark. So um, would love all of you guys to, to let us know what you think as that comes out into the industry. We uh, are the Emmys is the first week of September. So fingers crossed for that, for the survivor. That was my last project with the last studio. I worked with bronze studios and I'm so proud of the creative teams on that. Um, and you can find our company at www.curiosity-entertainment.com. You can find me, all my socials are at Adrusha on all platforms. That's at A-D-H-R-U-C-I-A. 
And the next time I'm speaking on a Web3 um, platform is actually this Sunday. I'll be speaking at the LA Tech Week event that Animal Concerts are putting on. If you guys aren't familiar with Animal Concerts, they are an amazing group um, who have been doing a lot of live streaming of traditional big music artists and collaborative events, both in the metaverse as well as IRL. Um, so happy to be joining them Sunday here in Los Angeles at LA Tech Week to talk to more entertainment folks about how we really push this ball forward. Oh, that's incredible. Well, Adrisha, thank you so much for your time on the Blockchain Hustler today. We so appreciate all of your insight, all of your expertise. It was such a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. Of course, and I'm happy to answer any questions for anybody who wants to reach out to me and to come back anytime. So much fun with you, Kaylee. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys do, just really holding a megaphone to so many of our voices and making sure that we spread the word of how this tech can really change the world. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Adrusha. Talk to you soon. <laughs>